that's what I did. And y'all see me today. I got my wings. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, my name is Alexia Nicole, and I'm living my life by design. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is the next step or really the first step in the process of interviewing to become a flight attendant. I know that's what y'all want to know. This is definitely the season of flight attendant applications opening up everywhere for almost every company. So let's go ahead and get into this. So the last thing I was telling y'all in the previous video was basically the entire process step by step, right? So I hope you all took my advice and if you did not already have your passport or if your passport was close to expiring, I hope you took care of that and got a new passport or applied for a passport or whatever. So now we can go ahead and prep for our application. So we get online, we see that the company has the um, flight attendant position open and you hit that apply button. I'm hoping that you all have started getting those resumes together. Me, myself, I have a few different resumes that gear towards different um, job positions. So one of my favorite websites to use when it's time for me to update or create a new resume, it's called MyPerfectResume.com. You go onto this website and um, disclaimer, there is a small charge for it, I believe. Um, I think it's free or a dollar for like the first two weeks and then after that it may be like $15 a month or something like that. I can't exactly remember what the charge is, but to me it was definitely worth it. Um, creating a resume on Word and all of that, I don't have time for that. <laughs> So I go online to my perfect resume, I create an account with them, um, it already has my um, name, address, phone number, all my contact information in there. It does have all my jobs already that I've listed in there previously before, it, has, it remembers everything. So what you do when you go onto this website is you create a resume, you click the button that says create a resume, um, it's going to ask you for all your contact information and then it's also going to ask you what type of position it is that you are creating this resume for and I mean it has everything that you can possibly imagine and flight attendant is one of those once you get in there it's gonna start giving you different templates of resumes and all of these cool things that you can do me um, me in particular, I prefer a regular professional resume, nothing too exciting or artsy, you know, just keep it clean and simple. That's how most of my resumes look. And I just think it presents well. You know, of course it can have color, your name can be in bold or something like that. I'm not saying it has to be dry and boring, but you just don't want too much going on. So yeah, pick a template that's gonna present well to the reader. Um, what mine has on there at the top is just going to be all my contact information. And then my next section I believe is um, like my professional summary or the objective or whatever you want to call it. Um, I have about Two, one to two sentences in that part stating what it is that I'm trying to to do presenting this resume why I would be good for the job or you know just your objective of you submitting your resume um, next on my resume I have my skills now this is going to be an important part of the resume because remember what I was telling you all that once you submit these resumes online um, these companies have computer generated systems that go in and look for specific wording in resumes and then they select those and move them to the next step. In the skills section, you want to make sure that you're narrowing down to words that you think or that you know 
they're going to be searching for as far as somebody looking for a candidate to be a flight attendant. Now remember what I said, being a flight attendant is all about customer service and safety. Safety truly is our number one thing. When you're on a plane, we're not there to pass out Cokes and peanuts, honey. We are there to protect you, to make sure that in case of any emergency, you're gonna survive. I'm gonna survive and you're gonna survive. So in that skills section, you wanna make sure that you're putting skills there that's going to catch the eye of the recruiter or the computer generated system. Skills such as, are you a timely person? Trust me, being on time is major key in aviation world, okay? Delays are not a good thing and if you are late, the flight is delayed. You ain't gonna get the job if you can't be on time. Um, are you customer service oriented? Major key, right? When you go to flight attendant training, let me just sidebar real quick. When you go to flight attendant training, they're not teaching you how to service these customers unless, you know, it's just like a, a different level of service that they offer or something. But majority of flight attendant training is really just teaching you the aircraft and safety regulations and emergency situations. That's it. They're not going to teach you how to smile and be nice to these customers. So you need to already know how to do that. So that is a skill that they may look for. Are you a positive person? Um, other skills that you could have. Have you ever been in any type of coaching or teaching or nursing um, careers? Um, those are things that they may look for in candidates. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and spill out every skill that you should put on your resume, but what I am going to tell you to do is if you can't seem to narrow down or come up with skills that you think will be great, this is what I did. I went on to the different websites, Delta United, Spirit, JetBlue, um, Frontier, whoever, and looked at their application for their flight attendant positions and looked for the qualities that they were looking for in their candidates. See what they have listed there. And if any of those sound like what you can offer, then put that down on your resume. That's not cheating, but you know, it's just helping jog your memory a little bit more. You know, sometimes it can be hard to think of what skills you can offer. Maybe you don't feel yourself that much and know everything good about yourself. So maybe you do just need to go read something and say, oh, okay, you know, I can do that. Or, oh, I already do that in my everyday life. Then, hey, write that down. That doesn't hurt. Um, so, yeah. So we want to make sure that in our skills section, we have about four to eight bullet points, maybe. Or however you're going to format it out. But four to eight skills that show them that I possess the qualities that you're looking for in, um, your next flight attendant hire. So underneath my skills section, I believe I dropped down to on my resume are um, my previous employments, right? And not all of my jobs, well, I'm kind of lying. Most of my jobs do gear towards customer service because um, for about the past 10 years, everything that I did was um, retail. And I went from big box retail to luxury retail so i've kind of dealt with all type of customers so that was maybe a little easier for me to um make the jobs that i have really stand out and point out that i have great customer service skills i worked at restaurants so i knew how to serve so i really honed in on that I um, did luxury retail. Those, those clients need a lot of special attention. So I made sure that, you know, I expressed the special attention that I gave them. Um, so just make sure that when you are listing these careers that you have, even if they were just like administration positions, nine to five behind the desk type positions, if you weren't really assisting customers or weren't um, in a face-to-face -face customer position, Find whatever it is in that job that you did. Dig deep, think hard, and say, what part of this job could I, do I feel like was customer service based? And put that down as the details of that job. Simple. You're still not lying. It might not have been what you did all the time, 
but you did do it, correct? Correct. After I have my work history on my resume, I have my education on there. Um, for me, I just put my, my last education. I don't list high school and, and, and bachelors and masters and PhDs and all that. No. I just have my latest and greatest of what I have accomplished and achieved. Then I also have um, any volunteer work that I've done or anything else that can stand out and say, oh, you know, this girl is this girl is what we want for the job. Any volunteer positions that you do or any charities that you work with, list those down there as well. Um, so that's really all I'm gonna say about the application and the details of the application. But yeah, just please make sure that it's formatted correctly. Um, upload it in PDF format as well. Um, Word can just get jumbled up and messed up, you know, just depending on, I guess, what version of Word they use and the version, you know. So if you upload it in PDF format, you should be good. Um, what else can I say about the resume? That's really it, you know, but don't overdo it, but definitely don't underdo it. So also on myperfectresume.com, you can create your cover letter. Cover letter is exactly what it sounds like. You know, you just want to write maybe a paragraph or two about yourself, um, why you would be a great candidate for this job, maybe talk a little bit about the company that you're applying for and why it stands out to you. So it's just a nice introduction to who you are and what you know about the company so far, and then they can look into your resume, right? And then also, hopefully by now you have reached out to a few people that you have worked with in the past um, to and asked them to write a reference or recommendation letter for you. Remember what I said, three, you're really good with about three or four, and then if you know somebody that actually works for that company, uh, make sure that they write one for you as well. So that's that part. Right? Once you submit your application, just depending on the company, and I totally forgot to mention this in my first video. I don't know how I forgot, but I did, and I was reminded by one of my subbies. So thank you so much for reminding me. But the assessment. The assessment, the assessment, the assessment, y'all. Let me tell you, that assessment weeds so many people out and I don't want that to happen to you. Let me give you my keys for passing an assessment and, you know, not to brag or anything, but I've only failed one assessment ever in my whole career life and not even talking about just applying for flight attendant jobs. I've taken assessments for plenty of other jobs and I don't know what I was doing that day, but you know, I was just like, Bruh. so they didn't want me. And I never made that mistake again. So first key, when it comes to the assessment, you want to make sure that you are awake and aware and your mind is fresh. You know, it's going to come usually right after you finish the application. It's going to say, okay, the next step is to take the assessment or it may come a day or two later. But regardless, it's going to come and you need to make sure that you're not rushing this assessment because you can't mess this up. So when you take an assessment, most assessments are probably about 30 minutes long, you know, or they usually give you 30 to 40 minutes to complete it, probably about 100 questions or so, and questions are very repetitive. Um, they basically ask you the same things worded differently, and you need to be consistent with your opinions and your answers on these things. So what an assessment test is, is basically like an evaluation of your qualities and abilities and your what ifs and what would you do if you were in this type of situation, right? Assessments are gonna be worded like this. It's gonna have your statement, then it's gonna have a column that says, I strongly agree, I agree, um, no opinion, I disagree or I strongly disagree, right? And then you're going to have to choose, you know, your your thought towards whatever the statement is. And it's going to go on and on and on and on and on and on and on like that forever. But what you have to be aware of is that in assessments, they're looking to see if, you know, 
if you're true to, to what your thoughts are. So if you're in the middle with everything, that doesn't really show them, you know, what your true personality is and what your traits are and what your qualities are. You need to stay more focused on the I strongly agrees or the I strongly disagree section. Because if you just keep, you know, saying, um, I'm in the middle, I don't have an opinion or you know, I agree or I disagree, but you don't feel strongly about anything, that doesn't really give them a good perception of your values and your qualities and what you stand for. So from what I know and people that I've talked to that have taken assessments, that's where people frequently mess up and they're not able to move on to the next step for the job because they're not doing the assessments correctly. So I'm not telling you what you should feel about these statements, but whatever it is that you feel, I hope that you feel strongly <laughs> about it. So, so I have taken one for a company that's very near and dear to my heart, and that assessment actually had situational questions at the end of it a full paragraph of this is a situation, you're on the aircraft, this happens, what would you do? And I'm not, I'm going to be so honest with y'all. I was so nervous about that because I've never worked for an airline before, prior to this. So I wasn't really sure, you know, what the right steps would be and, you know, what type of customer service, you know, I should offer. Should I go above and beyond or, you know, like, you know what? So my thought process while doing that was I've managed many of stores before. Um, I've worked for plenty of different companies and in a work environment, especially when you're dealing with customers, yes, you do want to be very customer service oriented and you want to make your customer happy, but you also want to be in the mindset of if I work for this company, what would be the best outcome for the company? So whatever the situation is, read it slowly, read it carefully, and whatever answers they give you, think about how the company would react to that situation. You know, if I were to do A, B, C, or D, how would this affect the company? And make your best decision from, from that thought process. That's what I did, and y'all see me today, I got my wings. So, so that's it, y'all. We went online to myperfectresume.com. We selected a nice professional template and we focused on customer service and safety for our resume um, and the assessment so just stay calm make sure your mind is clear make sure you're focused you don't have any distractions going on because I think I mentioned one if I didn't I'm sorry but I'm mentioning it now the assessment is timed um, most assessments are timed I believe all of them are timed, really. Um, and make sure that you are just concise with your answers and you, you give strong opinions, whether it is I strongly agree or I strongly disagree. So that's going to be it for this um, video. Um, good luck to you all. I'm rooting for you. If you have any specific questions, um, that I'm not talking about in the videos and you want me to go more in depth, please let me know. Um, Y'all know I'm just, I'm here to help as much as I possibly can. Um, next thing that we're going to talk about in the next video is the video interview. I know so many people have so many questions about that. I had tons of questions about the video interviews. But let's just go ahead and get these applications in, pass the assessments, and then we can look forward to doing the video interviews. Okay, so until next time, y'all, thank you for watching this video. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Share this video with anyone that you know that is currently in the process of earning their wings. Like this video so more people can see it and we can get more great flight attendants out there in the skies. Talk to y'all later. Bye!